So, you like the Galaxy S8, but there are a few things that might be keeping you from going all in. Let's talk about some of the most common complaints about the Galaxy S8 and how to fix them. We'll start with the elephant in the room, the fingerprint sensor location. A lot of people have been complaining about the fingerprint sensor location, and if you have small hands, it's certainly a problem, especially with the larger S8 Plus. And beyond the reachability concern, if your S8 is flat on a table, you have to pick it up every time you want to unlock it. Well, there are a few things you can do to help alleviate these issues. The first comes in the form of Smart Lock. This is a feature that unlocks your phone whenever you're connected to a trusted device, you're in a trusted location, it's in your pocket or in your hand, or with your specific voice when you say, OK Google. Let's run through a few common scenarios. You get in your car, put your phone in its mount, and start driving. Now you need to open maps and start navigating somewhere, but you don't feel like reaching around to find the fingerprint sensor. Well, you can enable the trusted device option in Smart Lock to keep your phone unlocked when you're connected to the Bluetooth radio in your car. So now, anytime you're in your car, you can just use voice commands without ever having to touch the phone. Then, when you shut your car off, your phone will lock again. Another more common scenario is when you pull your phone out of your pocket and want to get into it quickly. There are a few options for this. The first is the iris scanner, which was the only unlock feature I used when I had the Galaxy Note 7. It's a little slower than using a fingerprint, but it works in almost every condition, even when I have sunglasses on. To make this even faster, you can enable the unlock with home button feature, which will skip your lock screen and immediately pull up the iris scanner when you press the home button to wake up your device. While the iris scanner is an awesome feature, it may not work well for some people depending on the types of glasses they wear or their eye shape. As an alternative, you can use Face Unlock, which is admittedly much less secure because you could just use a picture of yourself to unlock the phone. For me, that's not a big concern because I don't hang around with people who care to get into my phone anyway. But if security is a big concern for you, you can enable on body detection. Once you unlock your phone for the first time, it will stay unlocked as long as it's in your hand or in your pocket. As soon as you set it down somewhere, like on a table, it'll lock so no one can get into it. Then, once you unlock it again, it will stay unlocked until you set it down again. The last scenario is when your phone is flat on your desk and you want to unlock it quickly to read a message, but don't want to pick up your phone to do it. Well, first, I'd like to point out that pretty much every major flagship smartphone out right now has a fingerprint sensor on the back. So unless you get an iPhone or an older Galaxy device, this is going to be an issue with every device. The obvious solution is to have a pattern unlock be your alternative unlock method so you can quickly swipe a pattern to unlock your phone. But if that's still way too difficult for you, you could also get an inexpensive angled wireless charger that angles your S8 up towards your face. Then you can quickly unlock your phone with the iris scanner or face unlock methods. The charger I'm using in this video is the Senio PA047, but there are loads of different options on Amazon. You could of course also drop an exorbitant amount of cash on Samsung's official 2-in-1 charger if you're a purist. There's a link to the Senio charger in the description if you want to get one for yourself. The next issue is reachability to the top of the screen particularly for the S8 Plus. With screens that are much taller than a traditional smartphone, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to reach the upper corners of your display. To help with this, there's a reduced screen size gesture that you could turn on. To enable this feature, go to Settings, Advanced Features, One-Handed Mode, tap the toggle in the upper right corner, then select whether you want to use the Swipe method or the Triple Tap Home button method. I personally recommend the swipe method because the triple tap home button method will reduce the response time of your home button for single taps. And while we're at it, here's a hidden feature. If you swipe back out after swiping in without lifting your finger from the display, you can increase the screen size to your desired size. When you let it go, it will stay that size until you leave this mode by tapping outside of the small screen. Next up is the built-in battery. Pretty much every phone nowadays has a built-in battery, but that doesn't mean some people aren't pining for the days when they could quickly swap out a battery and have a full charge. Well, while you can't easily swap the battery on the Galaxy S8, you can get a battery case for it and more than double your battery life. There are a number of cases already available on Amazon, and Samsung may be releasing their own version later this year. Finally, we get to Bixby. Tech reviewers seem to be unanimously hating on Bixby. But I think it has a lot of potential and I'm really looking forward to testing it out to its full ability when it's launched in the next month or so. All that said, for those of you who hate the dedicated Bixby button, there is hope. While there used to be an app to remap the Bixby button to whatever you wanted, Samsung patched that so you're stuck with Bixby again. That is until a guy named John Williams on YouTube found a different app to completely disable the button. 
The app is called Package Disabler Pro for Samsung, and the short of it is that you just disable anything with the name Bixby, and the button itself won't work anymore so you won't accidentally bring up the Bixby screen when you try to hit the volume keys. However, if you do this, make sure you only disable the things labeled Bixby, because if you start disabling other things by accident, you could really jack up your phone. John goes into more detail on how to do this, so if you're interested in how to do it on your S8, check out his video linked in the description. This last issue isn't really an issue in my opinion, but I know that it's an issue for some people, so I figured I'd address it. Since the phone is all glass, it can be pretty slippery in your hands sometimes, especially if your hands are really cold and dry like in the winter. To fix this, you can get a skin from a company like Slick Wraps, or just get a case. Like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and don't forget to subscribe to see the rest of my Galaxy S8 coverage. That's it for this tech episode, I'll see you guys in the next one.